there's a at least one video of you on your YouTube where you're doing animal communication. I think you have photos of a horse and you're answering questions the owner has that they want to ask the horse. And it's uh, the precision with, with which you're, you're saying like, oh, it's, you know, something in the, in my head here, or when, when you are arriving stress, it stresses me out. So I don't want to be around you and seeing, you know, the horse owner aware of the, of the accuracy is, is truly remarkable. Um, what, okay. So what's it like when you're, when you're doing a reading like that, are, are you feeling the animal? How, how are you getting this information communicated to you? Well, whenever informations are coming my way, first and foremost, I have to do some rehearsals to, to break down the brain waves, you know, so from being very high frequent and uh, stressed out, I need to calm myself, like when you're doing a meditation or in the same frequencies as when you're just about to fall asleep. So I'm in kind of a Trans, trance or med meditative state of mind and then I open up all my senses we have five and we have six and we have the seventh and when I have all my senses opening open informations are coming to me I see them I hear them I feel them I see them in front of my inner eyes as not like a movie you know in front of me but as if I told you or the listeners what is in your fridge? What's in the cabins? What's, you know, do you have milk in there? Do you have vegetables in there? Then you can definitely see a picture in front of your inner eye and see me, you know? So I'm seeing a picture in a picture. Okay. And then, and then it's very important to have the emotion too. So whenever I'm seeing, um, for example, a, a ball, I need to find out to figure out so the dog loves the ball or hates the ball. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's very difficult to have the emotion with you to be able to interpret it correctly. Mm -hmm. So you're primarily working with horses and dogs? Yeah, and cats, but I like I like the dogs and I loved working with the horses because they are such spiritual creatures and and we are sitting on the horses you know so when we have to connect with the horse and in the sport industry where i work they have to do a dance so whenever i'm helping the olympic riders or the national team riders in for example grand prix or dressage or show jumping they need to be totally in tune together and and getting an animal that weighs like half a ton to do things like with an accuracy and um, simultaneously movement with the rider is it's beautiful when it's not forced, but it's free will. Mm. Do, do a lot of the successful riders already have a ability to connect with their animal? Yeah, I definitely think that many of these professional riders are connecting with their animals, but it's not everybody that want to say that they communicate like telepathically with them. They, they would say, I read them or I know my horse very well. But to me, I'm like, no, you're doing telepathy, honey, but you just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when would someone bring you in to communicate with their horse or dog? Well, Typically when it comes to behavioral issues, because then they have a need for help, you know, but I've seen the tendency for the last 22 years that more and more animal owners are seeking help to prevent problems. But, you know, the past have shown that it has to do with problems. Or if we have one veterinarian saying one thing and the other veterinarian saying another, another thing, then the owners who are open to this want to know, okay, then what is my animal? What does my animal have to say about this? 